pug just came in breathing like a, I don't know what, a pig. Um, FYI. Hello my gorgeous what? ones, welcome to Alicia Budget Beauty. My name is Alicia, here on my channel, I love affordable fashion and beauty. I do hauls, tutorials, reviews, all sorts of fun stuff. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe and stick around. And today I am going to sort of rank all of the palettes I used in the month of May. I am not doing a number ranking that is just way too hard for me. It's like choosing a favorite baby, but I do have three different categories and I can show you guys like a few that I'm going to declutter, some that I think are amazing, and I have 22 palettes here. So if you want to hear my thoughts on all the palettes I use in the month, month, month of May, keep on watching. All right, now first up is going to be the bottom category. And this one is interesting because I have three palettes in here. Two of them I'm decluttering. One of them I'm actually keeping, even though it's not amazing. I'll tell you why in a minute. And one of them's actually not bad at all, but there's a reason why I'm going to declutter it and why it's in the bottom. So let me just show you guys. So first we have this She Glam palette. This is the Petal Power palette. It's a really beautiful color story. And honestly, this is not bad. This is the one that I'm keeping, but could it fit into the other two categories I have and me justify it being in with the other palettes in there? No. So that's why it's on the bottom. I created a beautiful peachy orange look with this the other day. And it, I would say this is like on par with a Milani palette, something like that. Like you could find this quality in the drugstore. It's better though than like a CoverGirl or L'Oreal type of palette, but kind of like a Milani. And But a Milani palette would be around $15 or $20. And I think these are like anywhere from five to 10 on She Glam. I did look, they don't have this particular palette available anymore, but they have several like it. These are not the most pigmented, but they do build. And that's how Milani is too, is you don't get bam pigment right away, but if you keep working on it, it will build up, which some people like that. I'm keeping it because I do plan on doing some more She Glam videos, and I would like to have some She Glam palettes in my collection to do those videos with. So because it's not a bad palette, I'm keeping it, but it's just not like in the upper echelon of the other ones I'm gonna show you. Now this one I am decluttering. This is the Sample Beauty Cult Palette. Um, I tested out a different Sample Beauty palette a while back that was a larger palette, and these are really cheap, and I don't wanna say like, oh, it's cheap, so like it's good for the price. It's really, it's just not that great. I think that there are a lot better formulas out there that are really inexpensive than this, and it's just kind of chalky. Um, I kind of liked my look with this one a little bit, but I, there's just, I just don't need this in my collection. I have way better palettes than this, and sometimes cheap just doesn't mean you should buy it. <laughs> so I won't be buying any more Sample Beauty, I don't think, unless they improve the formula. Now this is one I'm decluttering that is actually not bad at all. But, so if you saw my video on um, private label makeup, then you know that this is a palette that I put together myself, although we have two missing shades right here. And um, I was just testing it out. This is back when I thought I might have my own beauty brand a year, like two years ago. Um, I've since changed my mind on that and I didn't understand private label. I was looking into a manufacturer, I was like, these are really good, but now I understand private label. If you wanna go watch that video, go watch it and it talks all about it. But I mean, the formula is actually really nice, but I'm not, what am I gonna do with this? I This isn't a brand, these are just, you know, stock shades that a private label has that other brands can buy and put in their palettes and I'm never gonna like share these, even though I love my look with it. But um, yeah, there's no reason for me to keep this anymore. All right, next we're gonna move on to our next category and these are really good solid palettes. They're just not like amazing, but they're really, really good and I still am happy to have them in my collection. All right, so we have the Beverly Hills Jackie Ina palette here. Um, I did, okay, I, this couldn't fit in the last category because this is not a bad palette. Um, I do have it in the really good and I, I do think it's good. I just, I don't know that I'll keep this one forever to be quite honest. Um, I mean, Anastasia Beverly Hills is kind of, you know, just not, 
not what people really want to see that much anymore. Um, you know, some people get mad if you share it, which is frustrating, but it's good. It's just, I feel like with so many of her palettes that back in the day, it really was some of the best. I just have tried so many formulas now that when I use this and now I'm like, okay, this is good, but there's a lot better out there. And the color story to me is a little bit funky. It doesn't really inspire me too much, but man, this um, shade right here, I had a MAC single shade like this that I wore like crazy when I would go out when I was like 19, 20 to the club. <laughs> and that's what this shade reminds me of. I just, there's something about a like metallic-y red, um, but it's not like a true red. It's, you know, almost like a mix between a burgundy and a red, like on the eye is just, it just, I don't know, I like it. So I like that shade in here. Um, I like this shade as well. It's really pretty, but I mean, gosh, we see that shift all the time in palettes now. I think it's like the most common shift is that like brown green, but um, it's a good palette. It's just, you know, not amazing, but I will keep it in my collection for, for a while longer. Then we have the Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Thunder Palette. Here's what it looks like. You know, I actually think this is a really nice summer palette. I definitely see summer with this. It is a solid palette. I It's not my favorite of my Dominique Cosmetics. I really like the Rustic Glam palette a lot. Um, but it's nice, nice, solid. Um, I always like the shape of these pans. I think it's really pretty. And I don't think this is the most versatile, you know, I mean, there's only eight pans, but I, I do like this one. I think the quality is good. So that's why it's in this category. You guys have seen this a few times in my videos lately. This is an iconic London Beachside Babe eyeshadow palette. This one is a really good palette and really surprised me. Um, I just never thought Iconic London would have an eyeshadow palette I would be drawn to, but I am. The metallics in here are gorgeous. One particular, this Paradise shade, I've swatched a million times and shown. I just think it's so pretty. So it's not like a palette that is in my top 10 or anything like that, but it just was so surprising. And I think the color story is perfect for like a beachy summery look that it, it's just a nice solid palette. All right, then we have in this category, the Mimosa palette by BH Cosmetics. Now, some may be mad at me because I know some love this palette. And it, I mean, it's really, really nice. This is the really good BH formula. It's just, I love corals and peaches so much and pinks, but I don't think there's a ton of variety with this one. I kind of wish there were, I don't even know, like maybe a few more like or like true orange shades in here instead of so many kind of same same but the formula is really good and if you like I mean if you're like these are my colors then if you can find this um I don't think it's available anymore on BH I think you can get it on Beauty Bay then um I would recommend it then we have the I think this palette's really underrated this is the IBY Cosmetics um or IBY Beauty sorry Ocean Awakening Palette I think this is a stunning, stunning color story. And I definitely see two palettes in one. We have this very sunset, warm, daytime, sunflowery side here. And then we have this cool tone mermaid side here. It's kind of a perfect summery palette. Um, I used this the other day and was like, man, I mean, there's not like special shades in here. You don't have like duochromes or anything like that, but like this Catch Rays is a stunning, I'm, I just love like a green gold. It's beautiful on the eyes. And then this one feels drier, this sea glass. It feels drier and kind of chalky to the touch, but this shade in the inner corner, this super vibrant light, blue is just, it just does something on the eyes. So I really, I really like this palette and, um, it's $35, but I do have a code that I think it's 30% off. So if you ever want to try it out, that's a really good discount. My codes are in the description, by the way. All right. Then we have the Juvia's Place Nubian 2 palette. Now, 
this is a really good palette. If you know Juvia's formula, really pigmented, um, really solid, really consistent, and it's affordable. I'm not crazy about this color story. It's just kind of like, I don't know, but it's very earthy. Um, if I ever want to go for shades like that, it's great. This Cleopatra blue is, it is like this satin, it's like a metallic satin matte. I don't even know if that makes sense, but it's not like a true, um, like shiny metallic, but it's not sparkly like a shimmer, but it's not a true matte either. It's like a hybrid and I actually think it's really pretty on the eyes. Um, there's not a lot of variation with the mattes in here. You only have four. So maybe that's another reason why it's just, it's not like amazing to me, but it, I mean, I couldn't put it in the bottom. It's a good palette. I don't know that I'll keep this one forever. I may try this one out a couple more times. I may end up decluttering it just because of the color story, but if you like this color story, great quality. Then I think this is the last in this category. We have the Dose of Colors Smoky Soiree Palette. So this is a five pan palette. I think I have four of their five pans and they are really solid. I really like Dose's formula. Um, I had a tiny bit of a patchiness itch issue with this one with this shade down here. So if it would have performed really, really well, this would maybe be in tops because I love this color story. I love a smoky eye. Um, I do think that you get a little bit of a variation of like cool, you know, the black gray that you can do. And then you can go in with this champagne color here. So it's a good palette. It's just not, I don't even know if it's my favorite of my five pans of theirs, but um, it's a good solid palette. All right, now we're moving into my tops that I used in the month of May. I'm not gonna bore you with this one. I've shown it so many times now, the Nomad Cosmetics Royal Europe Palette. And it's, I've said, it's the multi-chromes for me. The mattes in here are good. I did have an issue with one of them being a little bit patchy and difficult to work with, but the multi-chromes in here are worth the price of the palette in my opinion, because some of the mattes are really good in here, Pug just came in breathing like a, I don't know what, a pig. Um, FYI. But anyway, multi-chromes in here. Definitely worth the, I think, $45 and you get five multi-chromes, but then you get all the mattes too. Plus codes are um, work on this as well. So really $40 about for amazing multi-chromes. I think it's worth it. Then we have the Citrus Punch Palette by Simply Posh, Quintessential Summer. I've shown this several times as well. I just think if you're still looking for a summer palette and you want to try out a new brand and you haven't tried them out, highly recommend. I personally really like the shimmers in here. Some people complained that they were too hard pressed, um, but I just like the sparkliness of them and they're not like too thick. And I just think the color story is perfect. Then we have our Pat McGrath Mothership Subliminal Palette. So this is one that I think upon first glance, a lot of people pass it over, myself included. This was not the first Mothership I picked up. I think it was, uh, gosh, this may have been like the seventh or something, um, even though it's the first in the line. But I just was always like, I don't know, that looks boring to me. Man, I love my look with this. There's just... Pat McGrath motherships are one of those that I think if you try it one time, maybe even twice, you're like, I don't get it. I don't get the hype. There is something about the way the look turns out. Like the process, you're like, these feel kind of dry. I don't know. I don't know how this is blending. Once it's done, I feel like when you look at it and you see someone, you're like, that's Pat McGrath. There is just something so special about it. And I mean, even this right here, it feels like kind of dry and like what, but like you can even tell it's like what, there's nothing that, oh, there is something there. And this in the corner, it is electric. It just pops, it is beautiful. And it's beautiful to pop with these deeper smoky tones in here. So I love this palette. I'm glad I own it. Just give it a shot. All right, then we have the Radioactive Palette by Gourmand Girls. I did a look with this mixed with the Wicked Widow Beauty Edward Scissorhands 2 Palette. 
So I used these for going to see The Little Mermaid with my daughter. I wanted to do a very mermaidy look and these together are definitely that. I used the mattes here and then I used special shades here. These are both so good. The quality is amazing. I, I love these. If you're into indie brands, if you're into special shades, if you like color, I highly recommend these. Both incredible quality. Then we have the Royal Rose Palette, and I used this on Mother's Day, and I showed this also in my summer palettes. If you missed that, go watch that video, but this is really solid. The website is back up with Cosmic Brushes, but it says sold out on all the palettes still, but since the website's back up, I'm assuming everything's going to be restocked soon. I do recommend this if you are in the need of like a colorful palette and you like these colors. Quality is amazing and it's so cheap. It's so inexpensive. I think it's only $23, something like that. Such good quality. Then we also have another Wicked Widow Beauty palette. This is the Tea Time palette. I get that this may not be everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> tea time, cup of tea. But the color story can be intimidating. I see, I mean, there's, there's no neutrals in here. You have to be someone that's not scared of color or that you wanna dive into color. But I love this shade here. It's so pretty, it's pretty as a blush. I love this shade here. If you wanna mix the two to make a beautiful blush or do an ombre, you can do that too. And then the shades, if you, I mean, blue and green. If you like blue and green and then you don't mind these, then I highly recommend, re highly recommend it. The quality is great. Then we have the Into the Night palette by Glaminatrix. I fell in love with this palette. And honestly, if I wasn't testing out so many other palettes and trying to like give my collection a lot of love, I think I would just use this palette every day this summer because I just think it's so fun. I think you have awesome daytime colors here. You have really cool like nighttime here and then you can mix the two. I am obsessed with the shimmers in here. They are so beautiful. They are just, ah, they are electric, gorgeous. And um, I have a Barbie theme birthday party coming up, not mine, a friend's, and I may have to dip into these for that. Then we have the Blend Bunny Lore Palette, Ultimate Mermaid Palette, fantastic quality. If you don't know Blend Bunny, please, please, please try. And this is kind of also one of those things where when I am decluttering and people are like, how'd you get rid of that palette? So good. Say the Lorac um, Fairy Tale, no, Fairy, Fairy Tale Forest, Forest Fairy Tales. Anyway, that palette. I recently decluttered that and a lot of people are like, I love that palette, but like I have Blend Bunny mattes in my collection, like with the dollhouse and there's more neutrals in there. Like they don't compare. It's so, Blend Bunny so easy to use. It's just, it, that's why I am harder on my collection now because I've tried so many formulas. And I mean, if you are drawn at all to teals, purples and blues, just saying, it's really good. I love this palette from Odin's Eye, the Norns palette. It is so pretty on the eyes and I'm a sucker for blues like this. Kind of like I was showing you all ago with that inner corner from the IBY or um, whenever I was showing even the subliminal palette, like something about a blue like this in an inner corner is just magic. So I love that shade in here. You have all different types of textures in here as well. That's what Odin's Eye does so well. They don't just have shimmers. They'll have like metallic shimmers. They'll have marbled shades. They'll have some duo chromes and all in one palette. And um, I just, I love this. You know, you've got cool tones and you've got neutrals in here and it's beautiful on the eyes. We have two palettes left. We have the Lunar Beauty Nude Prism Palette. I go back to this palette a lot. I'd say I pull it out every month for sure. If I ever, and just like, I don't wanna think and I want a neutral, this is something I'm gonna go for, especially if I need like more like pink leaning neutrals. It's just a beautiful formula. It builds up beautifully. There's no patchiness whatsoever. The shimmers are just really pretty on the lid. It's more understated, but sometimes that's what you want, especially if like you're going for a bolder lip or like your outfit speaking for itself and you need something like 
softer and prettier. This is one of my favorite palettes in my entire collection. I always say it's the ultimate bridal palette. If I was getting married, again, which I never will, unless we renew our vows, but this is what I would wear. And lastly, we I had to include, well, because I used it, um, but in the tops is the Nomad um, Okavango Safari palette. Definitely deserves to be in a, the greats of this month, this past month. It is such a good palette. The more I think about it, the more I look at it. I'm just like, this is, honestly, if I have this one and then the one I just showed you from Lunar Beauty, that's really all the neutrals I truly would need because you've got like your earthy green neutrals here, browns and like more of your smoky neutrals. And then in the other palette, you have like more of your pinky tone neutrals. So this performed great. I think it's one of their best palettes. I really, really do. Does it have the special shades like the Royal Europe? No, but this is something you're going to use more and every shade performed great in here. So I just was really, really impressed. That is it, you guys. That is every palette I used in the month of May. You guys let me know what your favorites were from May and if you like any of these. And as always, have fun shopping. Budget shopping. Bye.